obviously uh, monocast is a buzzword right now but uh, is it really um, you know give us an idea of the adoption some of the challenges that are faced in, in using a monocast uh, technology sure so monocast is very exciting to a lot of our customers because it you, you're allowed to use your DSS furnace and produce better quality material, which is very exciting. So that's the motivation. Uh, we have the highest mono yield and an auto seed retention feature, which is very exciting to our customers. But times are tough in solar industry, as you know. So our customers are doing a lot more diligence, evaluating the technology. It's also a unique challenge in terms of being a new type of material. Industry is very used to multi and CZ mono. And now we're introducing something that's new. And so there is a lot of work to be done qualifying it downstream at the module level. So that's kind of what we're seeing today. Uh, there is a lot of interest. We are working with a lot of customers. We're doing a number of demonstrations. But the adoption has been slower than we anticipated. A big part of that is the market today. Another big part is the cost to produce this material. Uh, the big adder in this whole monocast technology is a seed, which is something that the industry is working on figuring out how to reduce the cost. And if that's enabled, then this technology will be adopted. So, Vikram, I just want to uh, clarify something in what, what you've just said. Um, I got the impression that say early adopters or developing uh, this technology by many different people, um, only a small amount of the traditional uh, ingot was actually mono. You know, what, what percentages range are we talking about here from, from small amounts to what you think now can be achieved? So I think in general, from a development perspective, we have seen people make mono that's just one brick worth to what we have, which is 90% mono. So big, big range. A uh, lot, of, lot of the early work done in monocast was, in, in China, specifically in Asia, was qualifying the material, which has really helped us because some of the adoption barriers have come down. People are more accepting. They understand what this is. So we as equipment suppliers, our job is to provide the best solution. And the best solution in this case is the highest amount of ingot as mono material. Clearly everybody wants to be 100%, but nobody is there. And we believe, talking to a number of our customers, that we provide the highest mono volume yield. Now obviously uh, it is a buzz you know, issue. People are really looking at this as a, as a uh, initially as a, a replacement for you know, uh, conventional uh, Grzalski, you know, mono. But you know, is that, is that actually going to happen? What, what's going on with mono? Because it seems that's the victim here. Yeah, that is a big uh, question we all have. Uh, clearly, the industry has two segments, P-type and N-type. And this is a type of dopant you use. Uh, P-type is very common in multi and majority of the CZ mono that's out there. Uh, we will talk about our N-type solution. The question here is, is the industry willing to take a chance on a new material in the P-type domain, or is there already too much of it given what the demand is? And that is a key question that we're waiting to see how it gets played out. So um, uh, on, on, a, on a mono type uh, area, what, what, what's going on there? What, what, how can mono come back and be a, uh, a key technology of the future? Mono meaning mono CZ? Yeah. Uh, I think a key aspect of what a material enables is the cell architecture. Uh, we're already seeing, and we have actually had a press announcement of somebody using a more advanced cell architecture on a monocast material. And that's really what's happened on the CZ mono, is using more and more advanced cell architecture. But there seems to be a plateau between 18, 19%, uh, could be pushed to 20% in, in R&D. But really the next big step is a better material. And N-type material is well known in the industry as being a better material. But there's a cost issue there. 
So what, what, how can we try and get that cost down? Because it, it, so far, for advanced cells, all I can understand is you're going you're gonna to need conventional mono uh, uh, wafers, but the price is too high. So there are three aspects to that question. One is the wafer cost is high on the N-type wafers, and that's where we hope uh, we are working on. We're very excited about our continuous CZ technology called high cz to change that cost equation. You can achieve very uniform CZ material, bring the cost down. The second aspect is there's a lot of cell architectures being investigated for N-type. You know, P-type is one choice, so it's easy. People, equipment guys can come in, reduce the cost. N-type, it's not clear what the winning architecture is, which is a good challenge for the industry because a lot of very smart people working on that problem, a lot of funded activities, and in a few years that'll start to settle out. It'll become clear which path to go, and that's when the cost will come down. But irrespective, when you look at this at the module level in a dollar per watt, uh, a material that gives you higher dollar, uh, higher efficiency at comparable dollar is a better material to go. So that's really what the long-term vision of the industry is in the end types arena. And most of our customers are telling us that that's the place they want to be. And, and what kind of time frame are we talking about? What's the adoption there? How are you seeing that come about? So if you look at the advanced guys, the Sun Power, Sanyo, they're already there. And they have adjusted their cell architecture to account for variation in the end type material. We changed that game more cell architectures are now feasible on N-type, and we believe that will enhance the adoption. Uh, timeline is your guess as good as mine, but we're hoping next year when we introduce the product.